So it's literally 3 a.m. It's almost 3.30 a.m. or so and I cannot get to sleep today because I'm going through an I'm going through um a narcissistic episode basically because I think I may have um narcissistic personality disorder and I'm going through an episode right now of that because I'm thinking a lot about I've been thinking a lot about YouTube and I, I saw someone who has progressed so much quicker than me, and it makes me feel really jealous, honestly. Within just a couple months, they have so many more supporters than me, and it makes me compare myself to them so much. And you may be thinking to yourself, well... That doesn't sound like narcissism, though. That just sounds like normal jealousy that a person would get. But here's the thing, is that I... It gets to the point where I want them to fail, almost. I get into this space where I just want... The other person to fail so that I don't have to deal with the fact that they're better than me you know I don't I don't like the idea of other people being better than me because it reminds me of when other people have seen me as inferior and a lot of people see me in that way and have seen me in that way in the past. So I don't I don't like being seen in that way. Um yeah. I feel bad because obviously I don't want to be wishing for someone else's downfall. You know, I know I have to be better than that. But I'm more sharing my thought processes right now. None of these thought processes are healthy. I just want people to see inside the mind of someone who might have a personality disorder. I'm... Yeah... I want the person to fail, and the thought of them failing makes me happy because <laughs> because then, if I were to succeed, then it would be it would be um. then I would be the one who is superior to them. And... Deep down, I know that they're a much better person than me. They're just so much better in so many different and the only way that I think when I compare myself to people, the only way that I could be better than them is if they failed. That's the only way because them as a person, everyone I sort of compare myself to and then in this specific situation too, they're all 
better than me. And I always have these these voices in not voices, it's more I'm trying to think of how to explain it. I I had this one traumatic event in childhood. It was a very small thing, but it has really stuck with me. It was where there was these girls in my elementary school and they said something along the lines of how do you have more followers than your friend because they perceive my friend as better. So whenever I get into these moods of comparing myself, I hear them, their voices, basically saying that this person is better than me. And that I shouldn't even feel upset because it's just a fact that they're better than me. And just, I think about literally so many people just shaming me in a sense, saying you, you deserve to feel this way because you're a horrible person and also to add on you you don't deserve to succeed at all because you have an ugly personality and all of that stuff and oh it doesn't help that I actually do in a sense have an ugly personality but I just don't show it to people that's why there's so much shame behind is because I don't like I hate myself for good reasons <sighs> I hate myself for good reasons and no one understands that really you know if if I weren't me and I were to to just say this stuff, say the stuff that I think, or say the stuff that I've done, as if it's not it's not me, the person who has the reputation of being a nice person or being like an innocent person, then people would hate that person, you know, and there's no, there's no way that anyone could actually like me for the real me. And another thing is that when, when this whole jealousy spiral or envy. it's more envy spiral came to be here um basically I thought about I it repeated in my head over and over again I'm just banging my head with a fucking weight or something like one of those dumbbells you know just really hitting myself with it so hard that yeah repeatedly kept on repeating it in my head and it's scary I don't know if because sometimes I don't know if it's my intrusive thoughts OCD acting up and it's repeating something that I'm afraid I'm going to do because when I'm in mental distress I'm always afraid that something bad is going to happen that I'm going to do something bad so yeah I've I've had I have thoughts that just repeat themselves over and over again 
and sometimes I don't know which ones are suicidal or which ones are actually real and then which ones are fake. I, which ones are just the intrus my intrusive thoughts trying to scare me into thinking that they're actual or just, I don't, I don't know. And it, it's scary. I, they are all real then again that would be horrible because I have really bad sexually intrusive thoughts I have really bad harm thoughts too they, they get really bad and they scare me a lot and although they have gotten better and they're not as distressing and I've gotten help with it some. I still get them and I still feel a lot of shame. Especially for the sexual ones because I, I don't like talking about it because some of it and some of it involves taboo topics I've, I've talked about that on my channel and I don't it makes me feel even more shame about myself because the whole thing for narcissism basically is not wanting to show your true self not wanting to be vulnerable with other people so you have these defense mechanisms in order to hide from it and i definitely have defense mechanisms in order to hide from the fact that i just think i'm really bleh. for example I have this thought that I'm really a dumb person. That I'm one of the most stupid people to ever exist and there's no explanation for it. And in order to combat that insecurity, I feel angry whenever someone criticizes me for something I did wrong or calls me out for something I did wrong or doesn't listen to what I have to say. For example, my brother. I I went to the the escape room with my siblings and I know a lot about psychology, so there was this one part where we had to identify different disorders, and I was telling my brother, hey, I think that person has sadistic personality disorder because, or sadistic um, disorder or something. I forgot exactly what it was called, but <laughs> basically... <laughs> Basically, um, people, I, yeah, we were doing that sort of thing, figuring out which characters had which disorder, and I said that this one character had this one disorder because it sounded like it. But then my brother basically said that, nah, nah, it's not it. And then once my other brother said that, then I felt, I felt angry because I, I have this ego where I feel like I'm right. And sometimes I am right, sometimes I'm not. And I never know when my ego is telling the truth anymore because... I always think to myself, I don't want to be wrong because 
everyone has told me my whole life that I'm wrong, and I've, I've never gotten told that I've done anything right by people. Which I know sounds sad, but it's sort of the truth, and even if, even through my friends complimenting me or anyone complimenting me, it doesn't take away the void that I feel. I'm more mean, I never got told that I've done anything right in my childhood, in the environment that I was in. I don't know. My parents are nice, but I don't think they've ever praised me for anything, really. At least when I was a kid. And, honey, my school environment definitely didn't. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I think that's where most of the insecurities come from. And the government says, oh, school is great, you know? Sure, it's great for people who are in abusive households and need to get away, or it's good for some people. But it was not good for me. And it's not good for a lot of kids, I think. Mm. And... I'm thinking about now how I'm I want to go back to the compare comparison thing. I always know that there's kinder, smarter, prettier people and when all of that is combined into one and I feel like feel like shit almost because I almost feel infuriated in a way angry at them even though I know I shouldn't be angry but it's it's this envious thing where it almost feels I'm making it a competition when it doesn't have to be. Hmm. I feel... I feel jealous of people who can actually be kind-hearted. Who genuinely have a kind heart. You know, because I, I really don't, trust me. You, you may see me and think I do, but I don't at all. And I think that's the big part is the only thing that has gotten people to like me is my kindness and even then people people don't like me at all and that's the only thing that has gotten people to like me at all i think is me being a nice person that's the literally the only redeeming thing that i have but the thing is is that that's not even true it's all just a facade in a sense. I'm... I don't feel nice, and I know that if people actually uncovered everything about me, then they would retract that statement. And... 
and I'm not a completely evil person. I'm just saying. Even right now, I'm holding back a bit. My brain is going blank, but I know there's more that could be said. I don't know exactly what could be said, I would say it, but sometimes there's just thoughts that come up that are interesting because it teaches me more about myself and my mindset on things. And some of my thoughts can be pretty scary, though. Not gonna lie. Um... I don't want to be me. I just want to be different. I want to be a facade so that I don't have to show the real me. Because you know what the real me got me? It got me so much fucking pain, dude. When I was the kind, when I was the kind-hearted kid that I was, when I wasn't so closed off or so angry at the world, I was put down so much for that. And everyone thought of me as inferior and fucking hated me. I thought there was something wrong with me when I didn't even do anything wrong. Everyone be would be mad at me for tantrums, but the reality of it is, is that I was probably having tantrums because I, I might have autism. But no one understood that. They just thought I was an angry fucking child. And also, dad on, people just made fun of me and didn't see me as good enough ever. Even if I tried to be good, even if I tried to be a good person, no one gives a shit. They just don't like me, no matter what. So. I think I, it's, I got to the point where I was thinking, why even try to be nice anymore? Why even try to fit in with these people? Why even try to do fucking anything? Because here's the thing, is that if, if I'm going to be wrong either way, then why not be just the fucking villain, you know? And I feel almost angry that people don't understand why I would find their comments about me rude, why I would find them not valuing me in the same way as other people rude, but here's the thing is that I hate being seen like I don't matter at all. And whenever I try to give answers to anything or speak up or anything, I feel invisible. And that's why I'm angry at the world, is because I'm rarely invisible and no one sees any value in me. And no one ever has. And I feel as if no one ever will. 
Even though people keep telling me that I have value, I can't believe them. I just feel like they're trying to be nice, and I almost feel angry at them because they aren't telling the fucking truth. People say I'm good at stuff, but you're fucking lying. You're just trying to be nice. <sighs> My God. Yeah, you're just, you're literally just trying to be nice. I'm not good at anything. And honestly, I have no fucking value. You know what? With the whole singing and doing music thing sure maybe i do have skill in that and could be that but the thing is is that i have stage fright so i can't do that shit and when it comes to art well anyone can do it honestly and one of my friends one of my friends is getting into art more I feel jealous in a way because they've literally just started and they're already better than me at it. It's just like, wow, like, they're the type of person where they're just good at everything, I guess. And it, it, it makes me feel angry, honestly. It makes me feel so fucking angry because... People have told me that I'm good, or and I thought, oh, well, maybe that could be my unique thing. But then I realized that so many people are good at art, are so much better, and they haven't even practiced it that long. And it just, like, mm, mm, it, it makes me feel upset when people can do things so effortlessly without even thinking about it. Well, I have to try so hard just to get things right. But yeah, like, maybe when it was, like, I'm sorry, this is not sanitary, but I don't know what else to do. But yeah, um, basically, I, I don't, I hate everything. And I guess I want to be unique. I don't know. I want to be unique. And I guess that's that's why I seek male validation a lot, is because if someone likes you in a romantic way, then they see you as unique. You're the only person that they like, or at least it should be that way. <laughs> and that's why I seek it out so much, is because of that. Is because I want to be seen as unique and valuable, and that's the only way that I can get it, because no one else is going to see me as valuable. Everyone else is just going to replace me or see someone else as better. That's their friend. So it's not it's not going to be uh that sort of thing. You know? Like like sure I have friends who upload me, but at the same time it's just like Do they really value me as much as some of their other friends? Probably not. Honestly. Let's be honest. I'm probably the bottom of the fucking totem pole. So, yeah. Whew. Again, I'm, I'm sorry to any friend who may be watching. I'm just angry. I, I don't actually mean any of these things. It's just me thinking that I'm alone in the world and me having these broad statements. You know? Because... Mm, is in actuality, honestly, is anyone really that important to anyone to the point where they're going to be seen as a priority to everyone or really anyone? Not really. There's probably a lot of other people in my shoes where they don't feel like a priority to anyone at all. And although I, I don't think... The thing is, I don't think I could treat people like a priority. I want someone to treat me like a priority, but I don't think I could treat anyone like a priority. Because it's... I 
I just don't think I care enough about people. I genuinely don't think I care enough about people. Honestly, I just can't. I don't have the emotional bandwidth to really do that because I feel so distant from other people and also just... can't feel emotions in the same way, I guess. I don't know exactly why, but I suppose sometimes I feel really awkward when I have to be vulnerable around other people. Even if I'm close with someone, I hate having them see me in a vulnerable state. It just makes me feel icky inside. I hate people see me talk about things that are vulnerable. I hate people hearing them. I hate people seeing me cry. I hate that so fucking much. I hate... I hate... needing help. I hate... needing to be the one to be helped, even though sometimes I do seek the reassurance and stuff. I do seek that care. It's almost as if I don't want it in a sense. I feel uncomfortable by it because I've never really gotten it. I just fended for myself basically. And it was more self-inflicted but at the same time I don't know. It wasn't necessarily self-inflicted, though, because people should have paid more attention to my emotional state. Even if I wasn't that open about things, people still should have noticed. Certain people. Um, and by that, I more mean, like, parents you know but again i'm not sure it's a confusing thing because i honestly don't know who to blame because i don't i don't know what's based on reality and fact and what's based on me just having certain perceptions of the situation but I guess perception of the situation is still the same thing because when you're a child, you perceive things in a different way. You don't have the rationality to think things through and you just see things very concrete in a sense. And if someone isn't giving you that emotional validation, it doesn't really matter the reason. It's not, it's not going to be that great it's still going to feel the same way as if it was another situation where they outwardly didn't give you it you know um I guess another reason why I have I have a theory as to why I didn't feel comfortable saying things is because I felt like if I said if I even right now if I said something to my parents about anything then they would literally freak out. You know and there would also be judgment there too, so it's yeah. <sighs> and I know what you guys may be thinking, as in your parents are abusive or something. Just 
love them, be appreciative of them. Sure, I can be, and I am, but being this I was almost going to say the word broken, but I don't, I don't like that word. Whew, that makes me think of a situation where someone basically told me that I was broken. Or at least I thought they were talking about me. I, I don't know if they were, but they said, we were basically talking about this one show, and then they said, yeah. A broken show for a broken person. And I thought they were referring to me. And I don't know if they were referring to me or them. But they were probably referring to me because, you know. I feel broken. Ooh, comments like that hurt so much because I already think I'm, I do think that I'm defective and that there's something wrong with me internally and there's nothing I can do to fix it. I'm broken and I can't fix it. Okay. You're just broken and that's all you are. Also, I feel angry at my therapist for not giving me the emotional validation of things. Because there are certain situations that I talk about where I really need the reassurance that. And the sorry you went through that. Or just any sort of comment about the situation where I feel as if my feelings are valid, but it, that just never happens. I mean, I mean, it happens sometimes, but... It almost feels as if she isn't listening at all sometimes. It, it feels that way. And I don't know, it just feels weird to me. But I'm, I'm not, I, I don't really want to do anything. I, I feel so resistant to therapy right now because I don't feel comfortable with the therapist that I have at all. I mean, it's very hot and cold where some days I feel comfortable with them. And then some days it's just completely different and it just feels weird. You know, some days they say the right things and with some situations they know what to say and how to say the right things and how to do this, but... In some situations, they just don't understand necessarily. And I don't think they're a bad person. I think they're really trying to help me. But at the same time, I feel very resistant to everything. And I know I'm wasting my time by being resistant. What else can I really do? I mean, I don't really want to go switch therapists because the thing is, is that I have to quit therapy in a while anyway, so there's no point. Also to add on, I it's just what if there is no better, you know? And what if I'm just having a big ego about it again? <laughs> because it's the sort of thing where I feel very closed off. And sometimes I even try to talk on and on about a subject. So.
so that we don't have to delve into anything else because I can't really think of anything else that I could say. And sometimes I feel this judgment that she has towards me. And I know a lot of it is me being sensitive, but I could just sense when people feel judgmental towards something, I think. And it's not a good thing because then I just feel blah. I don't even feel like sharing anything anymore because I don't want to be judged for it. And I'm not even, I'm not even listening to anything I feel racist. Well, I did, I do listen to things, but there is this one particular thing of her basically saying that she's given me the tools to work through things, but that I'm not using them correctly. But here's the thing is that I am using them, but it's more, she's wondering why I'm still having thoughts and being distressed by them, even though I have the tools to help. But the thing is, is that I, have intrusive thoughts that are really bad. Trust me, they're really bad, and I try to cope with them, okay? I'm I'm at the point where I don't feel freaked out by it, I'm calmed down, all of that stuff. In a sense. It's it's definitely gotten better to the point where I can calm myself down. But the the thoughts are still there, and it does get to me sometimes. And I just think that's her saying, oh, well, you just aren't using the tools correctly. Or she did ask if, if the tool, if the tools just weren't working for me. And I guess I'm, I don't know. Because they are working for me in some sense, but at the same time, mm, no, no. I just don't think I could be vulnerable with her, though, it, because mm, I think I still feel upset by the fact. She basically told me that my autism isn't a thing. And I feel upset whenever people say that because that's a lot of what the trauma I've had is on. Is literally being seen as weird. And me thinking that I might be um, on the spectrum. And that's a lot of the reason why I feel defective is because of behaviors that, I guess, they can be explained possibly, but aren't. And I just don't think I could speak freely with them. It's, I don't trust. When I don't trust someone, I just feel completely closed off. That's the thing, is that if you don't handle me in the right way, then I'm going to be closed off and be quite frank, not really like you in a sense. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to budge. I'm a pretty stubborn person to wear. If you show me that I can't trust you really with stuff or you've hurt me in some sort of way, then I'm not going to trust you anymore. I'm 
I'm not going to trust you. And I try so hard just to push through things and to be like, well, just give the person the benefit of the doubt because, you know, um, it's because I know that I'm a pretty explosive person. I read too much into things. I basically attack people in my head in the in the faces. I'm saying in my head because I don't say it out loud, guys. I'm not saying, oh, well, I'm the victim. I'm not really the victim. I know that I should heal all this, but... Hmm... What was I going on about? <laughs> but yeah, if I... I'm very stubborn to where I won't budge if I don't trust that someone's going to validate me in the right way. And... I suppose there's sp very specific things that I want to be told are wrong, or I want to feel cared for. I don't like the idea of being, because I, because it almost sounded for my therapist my last session with her when she said that I'm there they have the tools but I'm just not using it I almost it almost felt authoritarian and I felt angry at it because I'm trying so hard and you guys don't I'm trying so hard to change and then just to be told, oh, well, you just have to try harder. It's just like, well, yeah, but also we aren't getting to the root of the issues. We never get to the root of the issues. You just say that we have to do these things in order to feel even though there's also they literally mm, they said things where with self confidence and stuff just say just trust yourself more be more self confident and stuff and I told them, oh, how can I do that? And then their answers were pretty vague. And it's just like, dude, I'm not going to get help if I, there can't be specific things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's a very weird thing where... Some days, some sessions, it, they help a lot. But some sessions, I go, I go out of there feeling like shit. And I don't know if it's because they're doing something wrong or if I'm just a very sensitive person or something. Because... Especially when I got the vibe that they didn't think I had autism, or I literally fucking had a- I fucking cried after that session, dude. <laughs> I, I, I literally bawled my eyes out because I think it's sort of a thing. It brings back memories of when I was evaluated for literally six months for autism, just to be told that I don't have it. Because of some fucking dumb reasons. And, you know, it's... 
I don't know. Also, the one time where she basically said, like, it sounds like you just aren't using the tools enough, which, sure, I get it. Maybe I'm not really saying enough affirmations or something. I don't know, but honestly, in my opinion, that's not going to help me. I'm... I almost need someone who can work through traumatic events with me and actually delve deeper into them instead of it just being more um, vagueish. Mm, I don't know. I know the quick answer would be just switch service, but I don't know if I even feel like doing that. I don't know if I feel like going through the process of even finding another one. And honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, I think I've... I have honestly done a lot more work myself than anyone else has helped me with. I think a lot of the actual healing, it's, it, it hasn't, sure, there were some things that my therapist said that were good. Like, I'll give them credit for that. There were some things that they said that were very good. But at the same time, um, I just think the majority of me feeling better now is more has to do with me which i know is the main thing that most of the time it's you who has to make yourself feel better it's not necessarily the therapist or something but other people in different just online i suppose have worded things in much better ways for me to where I can understand and that's why online is such a good resource is because for example with the one situation with my friend where I felt like they were shaming me and stuff there is this one comment on the NPD subreddit that literally changed my life and my perspective on the thing and I don't hold as much resentment towards the other person anymore. It was basically saying something like, oh, someone who's going to shame you for something is immature themselves, and it's like a child throwing a tantrum. They feel triggered by something, so therefore, because children are very vulnerable people, and thinking about it in that way, it's seeing the child inside of them and makes you want to go and take care of them and want to feel empathy towards them and if you think of them in that sort of way then you feel you there's there's also not as much power held by the other person it's always this thing where i think that someone everyone else holds more power than me like their opinion holds more power but by thinking it's a child throwing a tantrum, then well, they don't actually have that much power, you know? I think that's a big thing, too, of why it that just clicked with me. And I guess that's why I think I have the disorders, because people on there just understand me and know what to say. Not that I, well, I did post on there once or twice or so. And people related to me. But I, what is it called? I, I read the posts on there a lot. And there have been a lot of things that help me or just make me feel more validated on there. Because no one else can really understand. The general public can't understand anything. Whenever I, whenever I try to talk to other people or talk about my problems or 
whenever I say anything, people get confused by me a lot. By how I speak about things. They could get, get confused and don't know what I'm trying to say. How I'm trying to... Because I don't articulate things that well. I don't articulate my words that well. And also, I think another thing is that some of my mental issues, they're... People just do not understand. I could see that they're trying trying to understand, but in reality, they don't understand. But when I see other people going through the same thing or that jazz, it feels better because... Then I actually feel human. Uh, another thing is I want to know how to love you. I can't. I literally can't love anyone, I don't think. I mean, I, I love people. But I more mean in a romantic sense. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to, is the thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Will anyone love me? No. Will I ever be able to love anyone else? Probably no. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, it's weird because I always crave romance, but when it, a it comes to the real thing, I'm very avoidant about it. And also, Dad, on, I, I end up, once I end up, I feel like, because this happened in my last relationship. When I ended up with the person. Sure, it was good. But then I started developing feelings for other people. And I didn't act on those feelings. But they were still feelings. And I felt guilty about it. And also to add on. I'm just afraid of that sort of thing happening again. And... It just means that I can't love a person at all. I can't love anyone. I do... I don't know, because... It, make, it makes me remember this one time where... This one friend tried to say to me that I didn't love anyone ever. Even though you can't read my fucking mind. You can't read my feelings. Even if I didn't, like, who are you to really say that? He he said it as if it was a fact. And I tried to say that I thought I loved this person. My ex. But he said, you've never loved anyone. Ha ha the hell dude it's my own feelings if i think that i loved someone then i think i loved someone you can't say shit it's shitty how they ah ah this goes into th that friendship yeah. who Remember, Kirsten, they're just. They're just a child throwing a tantrum. And in that case, they genuinely were, because honestly. <laughs> uh, okay. Because here's the thing is that. They, they, they did have a rough childhood, you know? And to add on. Sometimes they just, I don't feel like going into it, but let's, let's just say they had mental issues and would say things or get really triggered by things and then get very upset at me for things, but... Mm. 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't. 
fucking know. <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys. The great, great. Mm. Oh yeah, back to love. I wish that I was able to love someone. And I, in a way, I think I do, did, and do still love my ex in a sense. Not love in the same way anymore, by the way, not in a romantic way to where I would want to be with them. No, not really. But in a sense where I still love them. I still, because here's the thing is that isn't breaking up with someone sometimes a form of love to where you know that you aren't the best person for them. And also, tad on, it's... Yes. Because I just want them to be happy, goddamn. Sorry, this is. I know when I when I broke up with them though. It, I know it wasn't really out of love though. It was more me feeling guilty and my own thing and also to add on because afterwards I reacted as if we were in a relationship again and then it turned into a thing where I was still seeking validation from them and then yeah that turned into an issue but it's only when I collapsed I think it's it's called, um, it's called a narcissistic collapse or something. At least I think that's what I had. And I realized that it was shitty. And I guess that's the point where I started to actually love them, even though we weren't together anymore. Sorry for stopping my, um, someone was in the bathroom, and I didn't really feel comfortable talking while they were in there, but, yeah. Again, it's, even though me and my ex, we weren't in a relationship anymore, when I went through that sort of collapse of my ego, in a sense, mm. This ego that I built up just dropped and it turned into just me realizing how much of a piece of shit I was. I, I realized that. I realized what it truly meant to actually care for somebody else, in a sense. And I guess in that sort of way. And over the years I've learned to love them in a platonic way and it feels nice I don't know why I'm crying I guess it's because I still really care about this person <laughs> and I guess I think it's the fact 
that they can still see me as such a good person and care about me so much, even though I feel like I fucked up so much with them. <sighs> and they know every single dark side of me, but still don't care about me. Every single dark side. <laughs> and it's the same way with them. <sighs> There's this one thing on the NPD subreddit where it said that if you would never want the person to be replaced. And if, 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 if the person was replaced with someone who could give you the same attention and validation and stuff, then would you want, would you want, like, this person? Or would you still miss this person from your life? And... I truly feel like with my friend now, um, the ex, um, I, I truly feel as if I, I wouldn't want to replace that. Like, if, if it's not them specifically it was someone else who had a similar personality and stuff, but it wasn't them, then I wouldn't know. But since it's them, I care about them a lot. So, yeah. I guess, I guess that's what love is. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what love is, though, is it? So, I don't, I don't fucking know. And again, I I know, and this is coming from very much, like, the sense of caring about them and love. I don't want to be with the person again in the future because I just don't see myself with them anymore. I don't see a long-term future with them at all, so... And I think they'll find someone really great one day, you know? And I I really want them to because they, tru they truly deserve it. Because clearly, dude, they're, they're probably one of the best people you can meet. Um, yeah, there, there it is. But, yeah, um, I guess, I guess that is, I guess... Maybe I can love, but I don't know because mm, I still feel as if sometimes I get, even with, you know, the friend, I still feel jealous of them sometimes and sometimes think um kind of think harsh things about them because of it because I use critiquing other people in my head I'm not saying this to other people but I use it in order to combat how good I think they are and how much better than me I think that I think that they are. And, yeah. It's that sort of thing. And I guess... <sighs> yeah, this is a hard topic to talk about. The, yeah, the narcissism is a hard topic to talk about. Because not a lot of people talk about it. And I've, I, I haven't really met anyone who's talked about it who has the same sort of reputation as me. I, I've never met someone else with the same sort of reputation as me who has possibly had the disorder. Never, never, never met someone like that. Because I have so many different 
things wrong with me. <laughs> I'm not a cool person. I'm not cool at all. But I still have this disorder and people usually associate that disorder with celebrities, cool people. I'm not cool, so and I'm not charismatic either, I'm not anything, so just like there's no benefit to it at all. I'm just a fucking angry bitch. Okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why people say, oh, well, you must not have that disorder, though. You must have something else. But the thing is, it's not. I, okay, in a way, I think I, I do relate to BBD, in a sense. So maybe, maybe that's actually it. But also, I relate to, I feel like I relate to BD way too much to the point where I would be surprised if, there wasn't something there, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Because I don't, I don't meet all of the, di well, I don't know. Maybe I do meet all of the diagnostic criteria for a BB. I don't know, but the last time I checked, I didn't necessarily meet all of it. But with MPD, I think I do in a sense. It's just that a lot of it is thought processes other than outward displays you know but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking of a comment there's a cow in my car there's a cow in my car Anyway, yeah, uh, I'm probably going to go though because it's getting like it's probably a, it's almost like 5 a.m. and I can't get any sleep. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight because uh, I just don't feel like it right now. <laughs> Honestly, I've already stayed up really long and I neglected to take my sleepy pill because the thing is, is that by the time I couldn't, I thought I was going to be able to get to sleep tonight, but by the time I couldn't get to sleep, it's already too late, so, yeah, by 3 a.m., if I took the sleeping pill, then I would be sleeping till 3 p.m., and I don't want that happening, so, but then that might end up happening anyway, because now I'm just staying up all night, but, honestly, though, if I, if I sleep now and then don't, take the sleepy pill then i usually do wake up within a reasonable time so i think that'll be fine but i feel bad for my sleeping pills <laughs> i don't know i i feel empathy for them i guess that was the only time i feel empathy don't know I <laughs> no i i feel empathy in some situations but in some it just like <laughs> fuck it <laughs> yeah but, yeah. yeah, sometimes empathy could get, be kind of a bad thing because you're so wrapped up in the emotion that you're so stressed out, can't think of anything else, and it could become bad. So maybe it's good in some senses, but at the same time, I'm a very sensitive person, so it doesn't even matter, honestly, as it is. I know. I I have this thing where I think I'm unempathetic in all the wrong ways and I'm empathetic in all of the wrong ways to where not wrong way but it's to the point where it causes distress like I have distress because of feeling emotions and feeling sort of empathy maybe I think it might be empathy but I don't know or sympathy or something but then there's this other side of me that's unempathetic and, uh, I don't know, it's just two opposing forces that I can't seem to figure out. But, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm probably going to go, go to fucking bed, but thank you for watching my videos. I love you all.